Consider supporting Arkea Soup on Patreon for as little as a dollar per month. Link available in the video description. Questions of Doom. Hello, and welcome back to another Questions of Doom. In this series, as ever, I attempt to answer questions that you send my way uh, via the rksoup at gmail.com email address, as displayed on the YouTube channel homepage, but as you'll also find at the end of this video. In answering these questions by video, it is my fond hope that the answer is not only useful to the person who's asked the question, but also anyone else out there who may be wondering the same thing thing and today's topic is one that that i've never actually been sent a question about for this series but it's one that comes up in day-to-day -day conversation uh quite frequently actually and certainly in terms of pop culture references and and, and taxi drive drivers and this kind of thing uh, and the question goes as follows dear mr soup ley lines ley lines ley lines ley lines are ley lines real you see references to ley lines and Stonehenge all over the internet and on television. But what do archaeologists reckon to ley lines? Looking forward to this bowl of soup. Best wishes, Mark. Well, Mark, as I say, you, 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 you have given voice to a question that seems to, I suppose, on some level, uh, confuse many, many people. And I think quite rightly. Ley lines have sort of entered a, a kind of a... Uh, a status in our collective cultural consciousness where you're not quite sure whether they are real or not and and i can't tell you how often they do come up in just random conversations you know in taxis you know oh archaeologist are you oh i see yeah wish i'd been an archaeologist anyhow ley lines right stonehenge what a mystery all this sort of stuff when people uh, they they sort of uh, digested the idea of ley lines and they're not quite sure what what they are and whether or not they're real and um, in that sense what do archaeologists think of them well i've made plenty of notes and uh well let's get stuck in ley lines are alignments in the landscape of usually monuments often for example megalithic monuments like for example stonehenge Although we'll get back to the we'll get back to the the sheer density of stone uh, monuments in Britain in a moment, uh, but also for example barrows or graves or buildings or or wells for example, yeah. anything that you can point to in the landscape uh, that that can be seen as being in a straight line is um, is often encom encompassed into uh, supposed ley lines. And some of the some of the the, the key uh, and most uh, prominent ley lines pass through prominent, well-known monuments. Stonehenge being actually one of the uh, one of the biggest um, uh, usual suspects. Often these ley lines today are assumed to have some sort of spiritual significance uh, and people not only in that sense of spotting patterns but they're also uh, allotting uh, a significance to these to these places in terms of maybe healing or enlightenment or energies you know sort of we're getting into the we're wandering into the realm of things like chakras and spirits and this kind of thing and um, so ley lines are observed lines in the landscape that's basically what a ley line is the phrase was coined in 1921 by alfred watkins an amateur archaeologist who wrote uh, a couple of books one of them being early british trackways and also the old straight track uh, and he was looking to identify basically pathways and trackways in the british landscape uh, and, and, and his idea, to a certain extent, kind of does hold water in so much as he was trying to identify how it was in particular Neolithic people, for example, navigated the landscape. Uh, and, and his idea was that intervisibility between monuments and key sites would be key to navigating the landscape. And <clears throat> as I say, this does sort of hold water from an anthropological perspective, but I'll, 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 I'll come back to that. 
Unfortunately, his ideas weren't very well received, though. Uh, as I say, the phrase was coined in 1921, and in 1925, OGS Crawford, an archaeologist and officer with the Ordnance Survey, refused to allow an advert for, for um, uh, Watkins' book in the journal Antiquity. So, so in immediately and in his lifetime, these ideas were being refuted and being seen by archaeologists as being um, misguided. You know, at best misguided, at worst entirely uh, um, just nonsensical. Um, however, in 1969, and sort of uh, you know, a few decades later, John Mitchell in particular revived this idea. He wrote a book, The View Over Atlantis, and, uh, and really drew on this idea of ley lines as being an ancient European expression of uh, ideas, for example, such as uh, feng shui uh, in China. This idea that actually uh, prehistoric people in Europe were onto something. They were in fact channeling and harnessing uh, ancient energies and forces that perhaps we simply don't know enough about yet. And it was it, it sort of revitalised the idea. And bit by bit, for example, in the Lay Hunter magazine, the idea was propagated. Notably, though, Lay Hunter magazine was uh, edited at the time by um, uh, John Mitchell's uh, biographer. A chap called Paul Scre uh, Screeton. Now, um, <clears throat> this 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 bit by bit uh, really spread as an idea, and certainly with the with the the, the, the proliferation of, uh, especially for example, fringe what we might call fringe publications, um, coffee table books, and uh, and really actually really charismatic, well produced texts about the mysteries of the universe this kind of thing uh, i remember reading one in particular when i was a, I, I was growing up and I, I just loved i really was fascinated by this book and in that book i was introduced to the concept of ley lines so it became very easy to find out about ley lines and their supposed spiritual uh, associations but crucially it's worthwhile saying that ley lines originally in uh, in what alfred watkins initial um uh, thesis i suppose were to do with navigation. They weren't necessarily linked with spiritualism or, for example, a new age concept of the world. Um, a, a famous, a famous pan-continental, cross-continental ley line would be the so-called St. Michael's ley line, because there were a couple of sites on that line with the name St. Michael. Um, uh, the, the, these lines uh, are drawn frankly all over the place in places like the US there is a tremendous number of ley lines which have been identified and uh, bit by bit actually some of these maps start to look really rather messy so the identification of ley lines really becomes the issue uh, whether you think that they're for navigation or whether you think that they are in fact channeling or harnessing some sort of spiritual energy uh, the identification does become something of an issue um, but I'll come back to that in just a moment now, since, as I say, since the 1960s, this concept of ley lines has become ubiquitous and universal. Certainly, for example, in the New Age uh, movement. And incidentally, actually, I've got nothing against uh, that, that sort of subculture, as it were. I absolutely love going to, to certain fairs and things and having a great time, for example, buying daft hats. You know, I lo <laughs> I, um, there, there's, there's an awful lot of good that comes out of that sort of, you know, hippie kind of uh, New Age way of being but also people for example who uh, have a spiritualist or a, even a, a, a um, paranormal interest as well one of my uh, other uh, guilty pleasures in addition to going with mrs soup to to uh, to fairs where you can get silly hats uh, is also actually for example watching ghost adventures um i have to say i, I love it i do i mean i'm <laughs> I love it uh, as a as a as a tremendously trashy guilty pleasure, but nonetheless, in Ghost Adventures, for example, they do often talk about ley lines as you know, uh, powering spiritual energy. And there's there's a clip, for example, when Zack visits Stonehenge that that kind of makes me uh, giggle and cringe. We're one of the few that actually get to be inside Stonehenge right now, and it's amazing. It's just an amazing place. I like standing in the circle and doing. Zach's good. trying to get sick. In yeah, Stonehenge. He's, he's doing what I was doing earlier. You're gonna fall over again, dude. Be careful. No, because the powers of Stonehenge. But just what an amazing place. Another instance of ley lines that got my attention in recent years was in the Marvel movie Thor The Dark World, where astrophysicist uh, Eric Selvig, played by uh, Stellan Skarsgård, uh, is convinced that there are ley lines connecting Stonehenge to, for example, a site in northwest Wales, I believe. 
The police were called to the scene shortly after 11 a.m. this morning after a seemingly harmless rambler approached the area, then decided to strip naked and effectively terrorize tourists there with scientific equipment while shouting that he was trying to save them. The man later identified as noted astrophysicist Dr. Eric Selvig has been called in for questioning by police. So, so these things do turn up and they have permeated all sorts of cultures, uh, the paranormal, the new age, and also pop culture in that sense. So ley lines, both literally, figuratively, and culturally, are everywhere. <laughs> uh, and it's actually partly because of this that, that, that I do stand quite firmly when I say that ley lines are in fact a pseudoscience. They are arbitrarily made up and they certainly have not been shown to be linked with any flows of energy or geothermal activity or anything like that. Uh, I, I, I've expressed uh, an, an affinity and even a, 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 an enjoyment for some of the, the elements that do draw on ley lines in, 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 for example, entertainment. But I just need to be clear, ley lines, as far as I'm concerned, as far as this archaeologist goes, and frankly, as far as any serious archaeologist goes, they are not real. Um, now, there have been studies that have actually looked into how ley lines come about. And basically, if you have uh, uh, any uh, distribution of random or even patterned points in a landscape, it is possible to draw a, a, a ley line and see it as significant. For example, <clears throat> uh, the, 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 the incredibly dense distribution of not only some of the key stone circles and me megalithic monuments in Britain, um, but also all of the, 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 the smaller ones across Britain, allows for a myriad of ley lines to be potentially drawn. If you pick a direction, you're going to hit or at least skim uh, several sites along that line if you just extrapolate it uh, in a straight line as the crow flies across a map. And this has been shown uh, in the modern world, for example, when it comes to the distribution of pizza restaurants, for example, I think in London, or, or telephone boxes, uh, that there are patterns to a certain extent already. Pizza uh, restaurants turn up in places, you know, in the districts where you're going to find fast food, and telephone boxes turn up on corners, and they are part of a, an underground network work of cables so there is there is a pattern there um, that, that helps with this but ultimately uh, it is possible to draw these straight lines in these fairly randomized distributions if you want to it all comes back to that old adage in archaeology if you're looking for a roman villa you're going to find a roman villa you, you are you are biasing yourself when you start looking for straight lines in the landscape now uh, that said though the the original uh, assertion that, that, that ley lines may well exist in the landscape to aid navigation was on to something. It was, it was just about touching a real concept, a real idea, in so much as people uh, do use landscape markers to navigate in, in landscapes that have, uh, have ancient associations. And, and people uh, will pass on traditions of going from one place to another, stories will build up, and people will frequently go on for example a cycle through the landscape based on these different uh, um, i suppose um, landmarks for, for want of a better word uh, i mean a good example of this would be the dream time amongst uh, aboriginal australians there there's a huge dense uh, landscape story that unfolds as you travel through the landscape it tells in that story uh, truths and facts about resource locations, um, historical events, observations when it comes to the shape of mountains or the coastline and this kind of thing. But crucially, most of these traditions, in fact, to my, to my knowledge, none of these sorts of traditions travel in straight lines. Uh, they are going from places that have a significance other than being on a line. They go from, from a place maybe where there's water to a place where someone died from a place where someone died to a place where you might be able to find caribou from a place where you might find caribou to a place where you can you know you can uh, maybe get some good medicinal plants and herbs this kind of thing and uh, and in that sense actually the line starts to look more arbitrary than than the meandering path that that some of these traditional routes through the landscape will take in fact the line is exactly arbitrary. It is being enforced upon the landscape as opposed to being something which is a true pathway. So anthropologically, absolutely, 
we know and we have we, we can show that people in, in, inevitably used associations with landmarks and in particular resources and, and uh, um, spoken histories and this kind of thing to traverse landscapes. But the idea that they did this in straight lines is, again, uh, well, I suppose I should say extraordinarily unlikely. It may well be that some that the, the A or um, A group in the Neolithic period or or before did travel in a straight line for for some reasons. I mean, for example, uh, some, there are straight lines that that, that are that are observable in the Salisbury Plain, but those are reinforced using straight line monuments. These are sort of processual ways. So there will be moments when straight lines are a part of the landscape, but, but, but often they're reinforced in some monumental way. Um, whereas uh, this, is, this association between place to place over vast distances uh, is, is extraordinarily, extraordinarily unlikely and doesn't pan out in terms of the real world use uh, of, of the landscape uh, by human beings. Another important anthropological observation is that people who live in landscapes, especially uh, it is likely people who lived in prehistoric landscapes, almost certainly didn't view the landscape in the same way that we do today. People in especially the Western world, but also increasingly in, 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 in across the globe, tend to view their landscapes from a map perspective, a top-down world view, the God perspective, as it's often called. And that's simply not how, how people talked about or thought about the landscape in the past. Uh, I've talked about this in a previous video, but for example, in Alaska, the, the US government came up against some issues when it asked certain groups to draw uh, a map of their territory or to mark on a map what their territory was they couldn't they, they, they couldn't comprehend what the map was and how that related to their experience of passing through the landscape the experiential landscape the story the the patterns that they built up in their head and the associations that they had with with, with those places were not part of this this sort of pool table uh, perspective looking down at a series of balls and and drawing a you know a line around a certain set uh, that that's just not how people live in the landscape or how they think about the landscape when uh, when they don't have maps when they don't have cartography so in some respects actually ley lines are absolutely a symptom of a modern world view and a modern perspective and a modern understanding of how a landscape works and can be understood being mapped back no pun intended onto people in the past so uh yeah in a nutshell ley lines have a fascinating history uh they had a, a, a an honorable and a, a really well well intentioned origin but they have been somewhat hijacked by concepts which don't really have anything to do with in particular prehistory and for example monuments such as stonehenge you can find lines if you're looking for them in almost anything in fact maybe that's a good experiment to do pick pick a feature maybe cars blue cars and try and draw a line through a car park uh, or um uh, you know, uh, hedges, hedgerows on a, uh, in, a, in a housing estate, certain types of tree perhaps in a housing estate. Pick a feature and you'll be able to find patterns, triangles, lines and all this sort of thing. Human beings spot patterns. That's just one of the key things that we do. We, we find patterns necessary, especially repetition for example, to get through daily life. We, we find them very pleasing when we, when we discover them for ourselves and also when, when we're confronted with new data, new ideas, even a scribble on a piece of paper, we look for patterns to try and help us to understand what it is that we're looking at. And so it's entirely understandable, forgivable, inevitable that people looking at the prehistoric landscape in particular will try to find patterns, simple associations, lines and triangles in order to, to better understand what it is that they're looking at. But for various reasons, uh, as, a, as we've just been talking about in this video, uh, the, the, this, this tendency that we have to do that simply doesn't apply. It's simply not, um, it's just simply not relevant to, to the landscapes that we're trying to understand.
So, there you have it, ley lines. Uh, thank you so much to Mark for asking the question, and hopefully I've answered your question uh, in a satisfactory way. You asked what do, you, what do archaeologists reckon to ley lines, and uh, to be honest, it is amateur archaeologists who first suggested the concept. It's just that the concept got out of control, uh, even though it was very quickly uh, criticised by archaeologists back in the early, in the early 1900s. So uh, there you go, ley lines. Now, now I, 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 I hope I haven't annoyed too many people in just being very blunt about ley lines. I, I try to sort of to, to, to show that I, I do understand the, the appeal. And frankly, I have fun with the concept of ley lines. Like I say, I love a bit of ghost adventure. This is a, a little guilty pleasure. But uh, ley lines have no basis in 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 how i work or how archaeologists do their do their landscape analyses and they have uh no at the moment no provable um measurable energy significance either it, it's one of those things where uh, this is really in some respects down to some people's beliefs and so I'm, I'm i'm not trying to say you can't believe that you shouldn't believe that or go away if you believe that you're welcome to believe that um, but archaeologists, strictly speaking, have no reason to believe that. And for the most part, as far as I'm aware, they don't. So, yeah. So uh, hopefully we can all be friends. But, uh, yeah, I do love a ley line or two here and there, in, in certainly in my fiction and my fantasy um, stories and this kind of thing. Anyway, guys, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed that. If you have any thoughts or comments, please do comment down below. Uh, do expand the conversation. If you have any thoughts or suggestion, suggestions about pattern spotting, or even, even if you want to make an argument for ley lines, feel free to. But try not to go too, too off, the, off, the, uh, off the reservation, as it were. I'm sure Mark would love to see your comments, as will I, or as would I, as shall I. I'll read them, is what I'm getting at. Anyway, as ever, until next time, do take care. Bye-bye.